Christian for over 28 years talking about things that matter with people who care. Production of McQuistian is made possible in part by individual viewers, supporters of the Foundation for Responsible Television, the Hatton W. Sumner's Foundation, helping to educate the public about the fundamental principles of their democracy and thus be in a position to help formulate public policy. Moss Adams LLP, certified public accountants and consultants, providing industry smart tax, assurance and consulting solutions to help businesses and their owners succeed since 1913. The University of Texas at Dallas, creating the future. This program is about positive psychology and authentic happiness. Don't know what that really means? Well, settle back and watch our experts introduce you to a concept that could literally change your life and for the better. Let's meet the panel. Starting on my left, Jim Hutchison was the president of Olin Mill Studios prior to founding Regeneration Partners in 1995. His company works with family-owned businesses in helping them achieve family and business success. Jim, welcome back to the program. Thank you. It's good you to You don't be look here. any older than you did a few <laughs> years ago. Good makeup department. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to show that video clip either, so you're, you're safe. Amy Blankson, co-founder of Good Think, a positive psychology research and consulting firm that's worked with over half of the Fortune 100 to bring the science of happiness to life for employees. A graduate of both Harvard and Yale, Amy aspires to bring the science of happiness to life for organizations through her speaking and writing. She's the author of two books, Ripple's Effect and The Future of Happiness, Five Modern Strategies to Balance productivity and well-being in the digital era. And if I ever have enough time, I'll read them, Amy. So thank you very much thank for writing them and thank you for being here. Glad to be here. And finally, next to you, Michael Cofield, board certified in clinical health psychology. He's the author of The Roadmap to Peace of Mind, which has been used by over 100,000 mental health patients nationwide. He's also the author of two online platforms, Resiliency for Life, and healthy mindsets, both of which widely incorporate principles of positive psychology. Michael, welcome to the program. Thank you. And Amy, let me just begin with you. I think there may be one person watching this program who probably hasn't even heard of positive psychology, not to mention authentic happiness. And uh, so let's talk about what it is. And when we do, let me uh, get up graphic number nine, excuse me, number seven, and see if that has something to do with it and you can explain what it's, <coughs> pardon me, what it's all about. According to this particular thing, it's a scientific study of human flourishing and an applied approach to optimal functioning. It's also been defined as a study of the strengths and virtues that enable individuals, communities, and organizations to thrive. Is that about it right there? I think that is, but I'd like to put it in terms that are a little bit more friendly for the average listener to understand. What I like to think of as positive psychology is really the study of not what makes us sick, which was what traditional psychology did for so long. When you fall below a baseline for happiness, you go to a psychologist to make you better. And you go back up to the baseline. Positive psychology is really looking at the individuals who rise above the baseline for happiness. What are their characteristics and traits? What makes them more able to be successful and happier long term? And that became the study of positive psychology. Yeah, and when did this begin, by the way? You know, the field is very new. It's only been around for about two decades. And so the research that you're hearing more and more often now has really just begun to hit the average consumer, the educators, the, uh, the, the corporate field as well. And so we start to see these principles rolling out more and more often and really changing people's lives. Yeah, I like it. Let's look at graphic number eight and see what that says. I think it has to do with the other part of the thing, and that's... Um, a guy named Sean Aker who said happiness is the joy one feels striving for one's potential. You might tell those viewers uh, who Sean Aker is. Well, I happen to know him pretty well. Sean Aker is my brother, and he is also my co-founder of Good Think, my positive psychology consulting firm. And in Sean's book called The Happiness Advantage, he talked about how the ancient Greeks used to define happiness as the joy we feel striving after our potential, that it's not a destination. It really is the journey in which we look at happiness. I like it. Michael, uh, she mentioned this idea of positive psychology is maybe somewhat different from traditional. Can you expand on that a little bit? Well, let me kind of pick up with some of what Amy was saying. I, I probably spent the first 10 or 15 years of my professional life uh, trying to help 
patients go from high levels of emotional pain and suffering to low levels of emotional pain and suffering. And the reason I did that is because I was immersed in the, in the medical model. And that model is based on one very important term, it's pathogenesis. Pathogenesis is the study of illness, disease, dysfunction, and the like. And from that perspective, along the lines of what Amy was just saying, from that perspective, then health is just nothing more than the absence of illness. And I think you can see that that's a pretty limiting approach to the way of thinking about uh, health. And the uh, pioneers in the positive psychology field, Dr. Seligman and, and some others, um, they kind of turned that on its ear and took the pathogenic model and replaced it with what and very few people actually know this term, but replaced it with salutogenesis. All right, I'm going to stop you there for just a second and ask you to put up graphic 18, and then we're going to look at graphic 19. So graphic 18 talks about this pathogenesis that you talked about. As you said, it focuses on the origins and causes of illness, disease, or dysfunction. And now the next one is this salutogenesis. So tell us about that one. Well, it's, it's along the lines of the, uh, of the slide. Salutogenesis reorients us and causes us to focus on the, the um, ingredients or the causes or the, the, um, the factors that lead to higher health happiness and higher performance or the, the factors, so to speak, that lead to flourishing and uh, human well-being. Right. And that's just, as I guess, changed your practice totally then? Or you do things totally differently today or uh, just mostly or somewhat different? Well, they're not mutually exclusive. And I, I want to emphasize that, that the, the other, the old school has, has a lot to, to offer, but uh, it's very limiting in its approach. And so now I think what the research is showing that more and more of these things can be integrated <coughs> and incorporated in ways that sort of synergize and work well together. Exactly. Uh, Jim, as some people watching this program know you and I have known each other for a long time. I knew your dad. He was a great guy and, and have had the opportunity to be around you and watch you work with your clients over time. One of the things that you've told me over the years and having worked with a lot of clients like yours, mm -hmm. family-owned businesses, is that there are issues. There are financial issues. There are business issues, et cetera. But there are also other issues that you deal with. So what, what is it that brought you sort of into this realm with these folks? Yeah, great question. You know, Dennis, in, in our professional life as family business consultants, we've had the honor to really work with a lot of very successful families, several hundred families in the United States and Europe. These people have wealth, they have prestige, they have respect in their communities. Uh, they have the trappings that most of us would see as and refer to as success. But yet a large number of these people are um, unhappy. They're not diagnosable with an illness of depression or anxiety or bipolar, nothing like that. But they're simply not enjoying what's in front of them. And uh, my partners and I searched uh, for several years to find something that we could do that would be different, that would make this a better place for these people that have this success. We came across positive psychology and we've utilized that in the simple teachings of positive psychology with a number of our clients and have seen really outstanding success. And what does that do for them? In in the business part, which is what you got tired for to begin with, does that have you seen actual results for that of that?